Buenos días, buenos días a todos. Eh, bienvenidos a esta última eh, sesión de, la, de las jornadas eh, Metabolé, eh, Crisis y Transformación en el Mundo Antiguo, que es el, el coloquio de la Red Europea de Universidades, Europeum. Eh, vamos a clausurar aquí en el Museo Arqueológico Nacional, a, a, a que damos las gracias por su hospitalidad esta mañana, esta, esta serie de tres, de tres días de intensa investigación, debate, eh, ponencias de candidatos doctorales de diversas universidades europeas eh, con tres ponencias a cargo de tres profesores de universidades también europeas que comenzamos el, el pasado jueves. Hoy, eh, sábado 27, vamos a terminar con la última ponencia plenaria del profesor Christoph Bielaski de la Universidad de Varsovia, perdón, de Cracovia, ¿no? de, Varsovia de la Jagelónica, importante, importante diferencia, eh, eh, bueno, que va a presentar un texto eh, que, ahora, que ahora comentaremos en breve. Eh, voy a pasar al inglés, para, para, que es la lengua oficial del Congreso, pero no quería dejar de eh, pronunciar unas breves palabras en castellano para agradecer a, a la dirección del museo su amable invitación para estar aquí esta mañana. Eh, now I switch to English. I wanted to address briefly the museum and, and make some brief remarks about the, um, uh, well, this, this colloquium. Um, and I'm very happy to um, introduce um, uh, um, uh, Professor Christoph Bilaski from the Jagiellonian University of Krakow, who is going to give to deliver the last uh, keynote, keynote lecture today. Uh, of, this, of this conference. Professor Wilawski um, uh, works, uh, researches, uh, especially in Greek tragedy, uh, ritual, uh, religion in ancient Greece. Uh, he's very well known and, uh, because of his uh, extensive publications in the area of uh, sacrifice, uh, ritual, vocabulary in, in, in the Greek literature. Um, he started with um, um, research Uh, in the fields of patristic, if I'm not mistaken, John Chrysostomos and uh, the, also the vocabulary of patristics, but then he, um, he moved on to, to, a, to another area of research related to the Greek tragedy. Um, and as I said, uh, he, um, he has published extensively on this area. Uh, he has led some um, research projects, international research projects about the, this area, and he hosted uh, some years ago um, a conference, a European colloquium precisely, in, in Krakow um, on, this, on this matter, no? sacrifice, uh, which was very, very successful. So we're very happy to have him here. He has been uh, participating very actively in all the debates, as you well know, in these uh, last uh, two days. Uh, and his uh, paper is addressing the key topic of our interest, uh, Metabolé. Uh, the title, as you see, is uh, Polas Metabolas Metabalusa, uh, a quotation from Aristotle. And, um, well, we are very, uh, we, uh, we must express our deep uh, gratitude to him to, for, for having accepted the invitation. And, uh, well, uh, Christoph, welcome to Madrid, and you have uh, the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation to this conference, which is uh, strange because I started cooperating with Europeum in, I think, 2008. It must have been in Bologna, Ravenna. I will mention this conference in, in the paper because it was about metamorphosis, so which is which lies to, quite, quite close to, to uh, to Metabolé. And then I had an honor to organize the classical colloquia in, in Krakow twice, and I hope it was not the last time. Everybody is welcome, and I'm especially very proud to be here uh, with uh, Miguel. I admire his book. He was with students for years about autism. And uh, also with David, um, my knowledge of Spanish is perfectly passive and limited to academic writing, so I cannot enjoy his writings and uh, to read his novels. But I, I think that's a very important activity of scholars to be not only closed in this bubble we live every day without no communication with the real life outside and I think to be a novelist and a writer 
uh, awarded with many, many awards and the whole the world. It's, it's something important. I feel very honored and I do promise to read the book about Dionysos and Ariadne, even in Spanish. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, well, as I said two days ago, during this devastating lecture by Miguel, um, it was a big part of my lecture I prepared. So I think that I can a little change a little bit the paper I prepared, uh, and I will start with the explanation why I have chosen such a subject and why I have proposed, I'm proposing to you this way of uh, common thinking, because I would rather think about this as a workshop and discussion than a lecture. So the, the, the explanation is that, uh, of course, in the title we have crisis and revolution. I don't think we can find any evidence in the Greek sources to prove that these translations of metabole are possible, both of them, I mean, and crisis and revolution, so it's a little bit risky. So then I proposed transition and change, which is probably more safe, I would say. And when I think about the change and transition in the perspective of antiquity, there is a long list of possible subjects, and of course a lot of them has appeared during this conference, to start with lexica, which is the development of language, uh, including the changes in use, of course, and forms and morphology and syntax and all the things, and of course the development of the literary genres and uh, origin and disappearance of ones and others and all this uh, sinusoid we have in the history of literature. And one subject which I find extremely important, which appeared yesterday in the presentation of Rodrigo, that's the, the biggest change from orality to literacy. Yes, and it doesn't matter, is it in this view of Havelock, which presented Rodrigo in this, in this Platonian uh, change, or this Homeric with Macmillan Perry research on the Homeric formulas anyway, or the appearance of the epigraphy, that would be another big metabole which I have been considering to talk about or the changes in the alphabet from the linear R. I think these days in Cyprus there is a conference about linear R I and or the, to the, the, the transition to the linear B and uh, later and finally the changes to Koine. There is a lot of possibilities to approach this fantastic subject, the changes in description of any kind of activity, public, politic, religion, daily life, whatever you can think about. Of course, from my point of view, it's very important to think also, it was very tempting to think about the rituals, but because there are two students of Krakow, they are literally exhausted with my speaking about sacrifice and rituals, so I just wanted to save them and not to go this path and of course there are changes in architecture and dress and clothing and customs and food and eating and, uh, and myth and uh, myth of let's say five stages of Hesiod or Ovid later yes as with this question of evolution and uh, idea of progress so that would be another great subject and it's everything and of course and in psychology from the starting from the point of view I don't know of Eric Dodds for example and uh, this with the big subject of metanoia which results in metabole or reverse way doesn't matter so so it was a huge list and I've felt completely perplexed it was the material I have in front of me. So I decided finally just to follow the easy way proposed also by Miguel two days um, ago, which I find fantastic. Uh, what is just the word? Yes, it's a metabole. Yeah. Just metabole. Uh, what is it? Uh, how we can 
define not only using this high authority, I don't know a Q, but I hate high authorities, and I pray every day not to become one any day. Um, well, well it's, um, there, there are many possible approaches to this, and I'm going to propose you some uh, possibilities using the key of this feature of this word metabole, which I stressed in one of our discussions, I mean this ability to enter technical languages, doesn't matter how we do understand technical language, uh, my way or Miguelian way, it doesn't matter, but it is something like this. The technical language and this metabole is really very striking example of this. So it was this introduction, which I was not thinking about before. And now I can try to follow the paper. And of course, David, stop me any moment because we have a seven pages handout. And of course, we can skip whatever you find boring. And that doesn't matter. There is an important passage about Aristotle in poetic, poetics and tragedy. I would love to save. Yes, but the rest. If you decide it's uh, just, you know, start coughing or whatever, yes, sir, and, uh, sir. I will. <clears throat> okay, so I found first an error, I think, a, a little mistake in the call for papers of this conference, uh, where we read in the last sentence that what follows is reversal of fortune or a transition point in the plot but as in the poetics, poetics treatment of tragedy, is it always for the worse? I think that it's, of course, in mind, the author, what is anonymous, um, had in mind, of course, the peripatia, yes, and the fate of the tragic hero. What is true, of course, it's, uh, it's a change for the worse, but if we speak, as it's written here, about tragedy, what also Miguel already stressed, yes, in the poetics, the changes, metabolai, applied to the tragedy are not for worse. These were changes leading to the perfect shape of the nature, thesis. Miguel used the, the metaphor of, of tree. Yeah, so maybe it would be better to use or to complete this metaphor with the idea of maturity. Yes, it's a where and when is the moment when we can get or anything can get the perfect nature. Yeah, so, so what is it? It's a, I will come back to this question where we'll be reading the, the Aristotle passage, yes. Uh, so, so here is uh, about changes leading to the perfect shape of the nature of the genre, the tragedy. Well, these were good changes connected to the process of development, yes, and getting perfection. But, of course, this essential and shaping quotation from poetics must be studied carefully here. What I want to propose later in a moment. So, to start with something uh, boring, for, probably for the audience, what is the essence of philology of our profession? Words, yeah? so lexicography. So I propose to look at the word and its original meaning, its lexicalizations, in, mainly in these technical languages, in the frame of the technical languages. Then I will try to pick up some exemplary uses of the word metabole in the field of various literary traditions and texts. That's the, I just tried to find the texts, the passages, um, which I found most interesting. Of course, it's, it's subjective, yeah? so, so it's my choice. I don't know, are they really the most important? But in my opinion, they are quite striking. Yes, and uh, finally, I want to turn to the Aristotle's expression in the poetics studied in the perspective of the evidence from extant passages of tragedy. That's what I like most. If there is still some time, I'd like to study Suda lexicon, because you know it's, uh, it's very interesting, this Byzantine lexicon to see, yes, so how did they understand uh, the meaning of the words, yes, having on the desk much more material than we have still. 
Yeah, so that's, that's uh, but we can skip it because in fact, Suda um, applies the definition by Aristotle, yes, uh, uh, commented before by Miguel, so, so it, it is not important. So to start with words, what lexica we have in Greek to express the idea of change? And then what's specific, what interesting is in the word metabole. As I mentioned before, my first meeting with the classic colloquia happened in the year 2008 in Bologna Ravenna and the subject was metamorphosis between science and literature. Metamorphosis is another word for change and there are some uh, Ovidian scholars here who focus mainly on the metamorphosis and uh, of course maybe we can discuss a little bit later about the important differences. But besides metamorphosis, which focuses on the change of shape, yes, that's more fair. That's more fair. That's something which is outside, let's say, yeah? mainly. Yeah? <clears throat> of this, what is external, visible. And then secondary, complete process of transition, transformation. What is a Latin morphological equivalent for Metamorphosis would be transformatio. Yeah, so that's a, and transformation is something adapted in our modern languages as well as metamorphosis. We have also idea of metallage or allage starting, yes, with allatto, that's the, that's the word, just most general popular uh, in general use word for change. And then we have metastasis or stasis or also aloiosis and then the idea of metanoia. Change of mind adapted by the Christian writers for penitence and conversion. Metalagia seems to be a proper word for a change for worse. We find expression metalagia to be you in Plutarch for death. Or even just alone metalage as disease, death in the Mostenes, much earlier, or the title of the lost work by Anaximenes, we know it from Athenaeus, that's a Basileon metalagae. Yes, it's a, the death of kings. Or finally, the famous Marmel Pario, which uh, students from Oxford can study every day in the, in the, in the Ashmolean. A description of Alexander's the great death. This is with the same with the same word. But to be honest, in Plato we find metalage epistemon for description of a simple exchange of information or knowledge. So, um, yeah. Metalage comes from alasso, alato, uh, just exchange, an object, an idea. In fact, prefix meta does not change in this case a lot. It seems to strengthen the main content of the meaning. Metastasis from metistemi is connected basically with the idea of movement, replacing. Yes, to put in another way, meta. <clears throat> Transposition, and it would be the modern life in the Latin form of this word. Putting something on the other place, it means also migration, a change of residence, dislocation, and also in Corpus Hippocraticum for transference of the seed of disease. Euripides uses the term for a change of appearance, mofe, or mind, or gnome, as in Heracles and Androma. Aloiosis is a nice term, in, um, it is a change base and the idea of a loss, of different, yes, of, of difference, used mainly by Plato and uh, Aristotle, but rather in, let's say, the popular meaning, is yes, not too much connected to any idea of technical language. So what is special in Metabola and why it has given the title of this conference. In fact, I don't know, but the choice is perfect. It's very good. So metaballo, of course, everybody who studies classics knows that it's a compound verb. Metaballo, what Miguel read from Little Scott Johnson line, means to reach, hit by throwing, following the Indo-European stem guelch, 
It's also hit by throwing, but it's not, not important. Just keep it in, in, in mind. Um, and then simply just to throw. Yes, the derivate noun from the stem bal, bel, bol, this is it. Then we have the bellos, to bellos, uh, keeps this primary meaning throwing weapon. This throwing weapon, arrow, spare head, arrow head, and so on. Crucial in this compound is the prepositional prefix meta always connected to the general idea of change in compound expressions, of course, not only. Yes, we have also this, this meaning after. Yes, so also in the topographical sense, like the, the, the most famous Metata Physica, yes, or the book which was put on the shelf after the Physica. Yes. And um, like these expressions are like Meta, Baino, Trans. Grass, by now is walking, yeah, so, or meta bule, or change bule, yeah, normally change a plan. Meta gignosco is the same. I like metagrapho because it's just transcribe, yes, it means copy. Uh, that's, that's what I like. Uh, or meta kineo is to shift, move to another place, and hundreds, hundreds are there words, similia. All these compounds follow the same rule. The act or state expressed by the verb becomes the subject of change by the prefix meta added. So in the case of metaballo, the subject of change is connected to the idea of throwing. Since the first meaning in the lexicon lemma is throw into a different position. There is a good example late because it's a Julian the Apostate uh, in his uh, oration number three. There is expression, a change the course of the river. And then this meaning is being extended to more or less metaphorical and alternated senses, heading to a general sense of change or exchange. So what comes up of this morphological analysis I think it's important that there's a rapid, or as Lausberg says, sudden movement connected to the idea of throwing, rapid moving of something from one point to another, to quote Miguel's favorite Aristotle. In Latin, we do find a morphological equivalent in the word trajectio, probably, yes, trajectio, or trajectus from a jacere, jacere, trans. Then we have transitus, what would be rather metabino, but generally speaking, it could be applied. What is the same, but the movement is less rapid, I think, yeah, because this, this, the suddenness is not connected to the walking yeah, so, or movement. In, in modern languages, we have, for example, tra trajectory, yeah, so the, the line of... Uh, yes. <clears throat> It is interesting to see in what extent this popular expression of change has been a subject of change itself. That what uh, I think it's most important as a result of this conference that is very striking for me, that the change is something what is permanently also a subject of a change. What I think is also perfectly covered by this expression by Aristotle from Poetic. Yes, because then we have Polas, metabolas, metabolosa. We'll come back to this, but it's a, of course, it's probably it's a figura etymologica. It's like vitam vivere. Yeah? So that's rhetoric. But still, if we would like to go deeper yeah? and to think about it seriously, not as a part of a rhetoric, it would be just the change, uh, no, to change a change. Yes? So, so, but it will, will be in a moment later. Okay, so these technical meanings, I find a little bit is disappointing. The fact the metabole in its original Greek shape has been adapted in modern languages only, as far as I know, I don't know, maybe you can help me, correct me, only in a medical context for description of metabolism, yeah, so digestive functions of gastrointestinal tract. I needed help of a translator, 
I had no idea how to call it, yeah? so all these digestive functions, yeah? the, the, the metabolism. And I, I think that the only place where we have this metabole in the modern languages as it is. Yes? Okay, so it is disappointing because metabole belongs to a series of most influential Greek expressions which have this special feature, easily enter technical languages, that's what I said before, yes? A sister word of metabole, metamorphosis. Yes? has achieved much bigger success in modern languages. That's, that's pretty striking. Yeah? So, okay, so now let's try to go through some, some, some passages. And of course, uh, before we enter the series of passages from uh, text representing technical languages, we can start with, I think, the first appearance of the word. It does not exist in Homer. It does not exist in, uh, in Hesiod. So the, the verb, metaballo, of course. Yes, but, the, but the strict word, or in the popular meaning, or in the technical meaning, does not exist. And as far as I could find, the panda is the first place. And here you have, yes, the expression is quite easy. Uh, what is important, this is, as you see, that's a metabolai histion. Yes, so that's the the changes of the sail track yes, of, the, of the boat on the, on the sea. So it's nothing special. Of course, one could consider is it already technical use of the marinary um, or sailing technical language, but I, but I don't know. I would say it's maybe too, it's maybe too early. Yes? So what is perfectly absent and in the Little Scott Johns and in Motonari and also in Adrados because it does not yet achieve this moment, yes, because it's a me and now this dictionario is a lemma epsilon, <clears throat> but maybe they will appear in, uh, in this um, expected uh, lexicon. What is perfectly absent is this very important use of metabole as an important expression of a technical language of medicine, of medicine. Uh, and uh, you will see maybe in the discussion somebody can add something more uh, and understand more than I can understand, but I think this is one of the most influential and primary Meaning. Yes, there is a book, you will see the, 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 the bibliography later, which analyzes the idea of the change in tragedy and the basement of the scripts of medical text. That's, that's something striking and I would ask uh, somebody in Oxford, uh, yes, uh, the dealing with the updating of the Little Scott John edition online to add this important meaning to this lemma. Yeah, so, of course, this uh, uh, passages, I don't know, this way or this way? This way? This way. Yes, okay, the, 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 there are several passages. I'm not going to, to read all of them because from now I have something about 15 minutes probably or 20. So, so just to, for you, yes, just to, to look to study what kind of importance we are speaking about uh, here. Um, I don't know if you know the, the, in the translation the word uh, ptisan, English speaking people, do you know it? Because I couldn't find, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty old translation, but I found it's a thick gruel or porridge, uh, whatever. Yeah, so. So something like, like this. It does, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. But what is important is that uh, perhaps it appears to them reasonable that as a great change has taken place in the body, it should be counteracted by another great change. Yeah, so that here in this medical script, the idea of change connected on these two levels with the body itself yes, and with the treatment. Yes, is crucial. And these two technical meanings cross one to another. Any, I, I can't remember, I have my notes somewhere, but it's just hundreds of, of evidence of, of this. Okay, so that's, that's what I found very interesting. Uh, doesn't work. Up. Okay. 
today. The other, um, the other is the same. It speaks about the change in the body. I can't uh, do is to have Greek text and translation, so just take this translation of it to what may be said on the opposite side, namely that the change of diet, the change of diet, yes, occurred in these cases without any change in the body. Yes, so these two levels I mentioned before of this technical meaning. And um, the next. it. Okay. Uh, Hippocrates, the, uh, the humoribus, it doesn't uh, important. This passage, maybe what, what is important, that's uh, metabolai malista tictusi nu semata. Yeah, so that's a very interesting passage. We are not going to study this because then we have next six pages to read, but it's uh, important information. Yeah, so that, uh, the change there is a letter of um, Seneca, if you remember, about reading was the same metaphor. When you, when, you, when you change the treatment of a wound too often, yes, it is not go going to be healed. And I think it's uh, the same topos, but, but still it is important. It is a term used to describe internal changes in the body resulting from the onset of disease and changes in the cause or type of disease. It can also describe changing external factors, such variations in regimen, medical treatment, or the weather. If change has resulted in sickness, it is the healer's task to counteract or reverse the direction of the change in order to restore health. Thus the term metabole turns up in discussion of causation pathology and treatment. That's not my words, that's Jennifer Kosak, heroic measures, Hippocratic medicine in the making of Euripedian tragedy. That's the publication I mentioned before. It should be somewhere, okay, not this. No. Oh yes, uh, so that's, that's here if anybody is interested in Le Champ Semantique the Changement dans la Collection Hippocratique. It's uh, another paper published in Madrid. Anyway, okay. <clears throat> so the last thing connected with this part of technical uses of metabole in the meaning of this modern metabolism is appears, in my opinion, maybe, maybe anybody can correct me, in Aristotle, the parts of animals where he sets out enough details of these views on metabolism for an open flow model to be made. He believed that at each stage of the process, materials from food were transformed with heat being released as the classical element of fire and residual materials being excreted as, for example, urine. Okay, and that's the, that's the passage. I'm, I'm just for you, you can, you can read. And now we turn to other points. Uh, the first uh, area is rhetoric. Yes, it also has been mentioned by Miguel. So first, uh, what escaped uh, our uh, knowledge, it's a, there, we have the rhetoric uh, figure, just metabole, just metabole. Yeah, it's a change, metastasis, and uh, metabole from metabolain to flip to another place, a stylistic figure, rhetorical figure, that introduces a change in a work involving the repetition of a given thought using different terms. Also a change in word order to achieve a desired phonetic impression. That's what we look at in the moment, moving of vowels, or words, or a change in the rhythm of a poem in matter. Yeah, so that's another subject, uh, part of the theory of rhetoric. Uh, here we, you have, uh, I'm afraid to move because it will disappear, but it's a, 
that's um, in the Pistola at Pompeium in Dionysus Halakirnasus, we have the Cosche de Crema and Historias Grafe Metabole Kai Poi Kilon. Yes, this connection between Poi Kilon, yes, that's uh, um, colored, yes, differentiating, whatever, uh, yes, uh, and and metabole are connected. Yes, so the poikile is a nice term. That maybe is even handier this year, something like a colored change. It has to enjoy the change in literary uh, work as a writer, for example. Yes, so in theory of rhetoric, metabole appears also as a part of oranatus. That's another part of the theory of rhetoric in the, per, in the pervasive, per, 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 Suasive speeches, understood as variatio, yeah, that's also the same what we had before. Uh, that's uh, Lausberg uh, and uh, quotation. It's this rhetoric from Aristotle. Change also is pleasant, since change is in the order of nature for perpetual seminal creatures and excess of the normal condition whence it was said change in all things is sweet you see that Europedius will be back in a moment to this quotation this is why what we only see in the intervals whether man or things is pleasant for this is a change from the present and at the same time it is rare yeah, so that's the uh, um, Aristotelian view that's uh, the first sentence is also nice even if we take it out of the context yes because it says that the change is a nice thing yeah? miguel isn't it yes yes uh, okay um uh, yes this uh, we can omit and uh, there's another part of rhetoric where we have metabole that's a kind of polyptaton uh, pronominal polyptaton and uh, we can take a look on the example from Tiberius Rhetor, the figuris, and the example you have is here. Yes, a metabole occurs not only when a noun occurs in the multiple instances, but also when pronominal expressions change such as. Yes, and then we have this series, Hoyontis gar, tak pompai trieres, poioitis, poion. Yes, so, and that's the, the, the rhetoric example of this figure of this polyptoton. Yes, so what tis, and then we have it. What poi, and then we have what poi, and then again what tis, and what poion again. Yes, so that's this modulation. Uh, okay, so in the structures of systematic rhetoric as well as in the literary theory for drama, we have metabole as a suddenness, to be precise, sudden metabasis. There are two kinds of metabole, peripatia and aragnorismos. I'm not going to speak about it because Miguel explained it perfectly before, recalling correctly this uh, quotations from Aristotle, which we have, but still we have here this idea of suddenness, yes, of this change. And now we can turn to uh, politics, and that's the part I'm going to maybe um, omit or go through very quickly because um, it's been said a lot and yesterday and two days before about this uh, field. So I would stress on the one important meaning which probably was not so clearly explained during the lectures. It is the technical language of politics where metabole means mainly constitutional change. Yes, it was yesterday um, Professor Fran uh, Fe Fe Federica, yes, Federica said uh, about it. Okay, um, so the, the, this occurs chiefly after alternations of the constitutions have taken place, but it's politics, it's boring. Then, then we have, no, okay, uh, then we have this Polybius here, which is, uh, nice example of the use of a metabola in the military language yes when we that's the description of phalanga yes and then is this uh, situation explaining the moves of the rows in the phalanga the 
first and the second. Yeah, so this, this kind of change, I don't know how is it in English, but in Polish probably we could find a technical meaning of this in this situation. Yeah, so that's a description of a, a very specific change yes, in the movements of the army in attack. Uh, okay, and uh, one important thing which does appear, thanks to God's in Little Scott Jones, what is very striking and needs also attention because one uh, passage of uh, tragedy, that's the technical language of music, yes, with the, where this meaning is very, very strict. It is just and only modulation. Yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's something to, to study. Um, now I just sh want to show you the... Uh, huh? this passage from Aristoxenos Elementa Harmonica, yes, where we have this uh, two expression, toha plun kai metabole. Yeah, so uh, this, is the, um, uh, this is the distinctions between um, uh, plane and modulation. So, so this is this is also very important. Philosophy. This is the next part of the technical language, and uh, there is a lot of passages. Uh, this you know already because it's a favorite passage uh, of Miguel, and so we can skip it. There is another one. Um, there is another one. Well, I like it because it's uh, connected with the philosophical, uh, oh, no, dispute on, on the time. It's very interesting to study this, of course, in, in the connection with, I don't know, the 11th book of Augustine Confessions, yes, and there to be f followed by uh, Ricoeur's commentary on both these books, but I'm not uh, going in details here, but it's important to know just that the, the, the metabole is an important part of the definition of time in the Greek philosophy. Well, that's, that's just to let you know. And um, the next uh, doesn't... Uh, well, this, this one uh, I find interesting because you know these are the last sentence of the famous book Gamma of metaphysics, yes, with the idea of this unmoved mover, which is the fundament of the Western metaphysics at all. It is also interesting to see that in this context metabole appears and is pretty, uh, pretty important. So, so we have the idea of change in the structure of the very heart of the Western metaphysics in the theory of being. Yes. And we have a kind of a definition of change expressed by metabole in this book Gamma, uh, Aristotle. Well, I don't know, uh, because now I would love to turn to tragedy, but I don't know how much time we have, just five minutes. Um, uh, I will maybe only tell you why I find it important in the connection with poetics because uh, metabole was used by Aristotle to describe a complex development and evolution of different values and many elements of the original essence of the tragedy, what I said before, and what about metabole in the survived texts of tragedy. I find it very interesting. It is interconnected of, uh, on any level with Aristotle's careful reader of the text, understanding of the word and its meaning. What is the connection? They are not too many appearances, uh, just seven in the text of the complete tragedies and uh, five fragmentary pieces. What is striking, most of them we find in Europedias. Uh, the, the, during this conference then we um, met suggestions that Europedias is somebody, you know, they call them innovator. Yeah? So if there is any tragic poet who could be dealing with metabole in practice on many levels, including music, yes, it would be Europedias. 
Yes, it is interesting to go through these quotations because they can give some inputs to our interpretation of the Aristotle statement in poetics. I think, I imagine Aristotle, could be even Anthony Hopkins in this Oliver Stone's production, doesn't matter, okay? So I, I imagine him lecturing in the hall in the Lycaon in Athens, somewhere about 324, 5, BC, holding in his hands his papyri notes, yes, and uh, the pupils, and himself surrounded by scrolls with the texts of the tragedies, uh, this which we have and this which disappeared, yes, and uh, just reading and using the quotations for the, uh, for the lecture about poetics, what probably is this what we have. Um, and I see him sitting at the table or walking, maybe rather walking, yes, a peripateo. Uh, and everywhere on the table and on the floor, yes, there are scrolls uh, pushed with uh, little stones. That's what I uh, think when I wonder how um, Aeschylus could have been working on, on the poetics. And, okay, so just uh, without any commentary to show you this, uh, this is not important because these are fragments of tragedy which does not contain the metabole, but we have metabole in comments yes, of uh, Demetrius or Athenaios or anybody who is the author of the collection. Uh, but then uh, important expressions like metabola kakon, Yes, that's what you could like. Yes, Evel has changed sides. And uh, here we have um, um, other, like, like in Elifigania Taurica, yes, the Didusa Metabolas, Lian Didusa Metabolas. Um, well, that's nice in Bakhai, you know, that's uh, maybe just few words because it's uh, the line, the, the, the dialogue between Agawe and Cadmus yes, in the moment when Agawe is still in, in Mania and it's slowly waking up. Yes, and the, the dialogue between Cadmus and Agawe is uh, uh, he is asking her, do timoitot ex pei pasei soran? So it's, uh, uh, what, what the, the, the question is about her possibility, ability to see, to see things as they are, to see normally, yes, and then uh, uh, that, that's the part of Agawa, and Kadmos say uh, with the questions, what do you see, yes, do you see the, 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 the sky, yes, the same, or are there any metabol metaboli, yeah, which, you, which you see in, uh, in this, and uh, which is uh, in Iphigenia in Aulis, which is metabolas, which comes as a result of thinking. And we have uh, the, the view of, uh, of Menelaus, who first was very tough yes, and very pushing, and then holds back, and he explains to Agamemnon, his brother, that he's ready to give up. Yes, and then, then formulates these questions, uh, how to come to such kind of uh, metabole. And uh, I think that we can, uh, and we must, stop at this moment, that's 11, um, so I speak about 50 minutes, which is uh, long too much. And uh, there is uh, some interesting things I would love to share with you but it's always better to stop a little bit earlier than a little bit too late. So, so, so thank you so much for your um, attention and also thank you for this long journey we have done starting with a little fish uh, with uh, remora, not up over with an egg as the Romans used to do, but with a fish and then we could study a lot of changes and I tried to make some order in this. Uh, of course, it was 
and effective because, as you see, the change is a subject of the change and everything changes, including the paper I prepared. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Vieraski, for your for your lecture. Now we have some some time for a for a discussion. Um, I, I would start uh, by asking a couple of, of things of remarks on on your on your huge topic, no? which I really enjoyed because it's a very interesting panorama of all these uses from rhetoric to medicine to uh, tragedy. So it was quite a, an interesting summary, also as as a way of conclusion of this uh, colloquium, uh, which allow us to, um, to reflect upon the world from the etymology and the origins of the, of the, of the different concepts uh, implied in metaballo, metabole, uh, and so on, until the, uh, the literary nachleben uh, of these uh, um, origins. No? So my, my two uh, points were, um, well, I, I, was, I was taking some notes here regarding this uh, last part on philosophy or middle part on philosophy. Um, I, Aristotle is our main reference here, no? and um, I was wondering uh, about the pre-Aristotelian metabole and the post-Aristotelian one, because he's the point of reference. There's no, no way to escape these passages of the physics, of the poetics, etc., where we, ha we have been uh, addressing in the last days. But I was wondering, uh, what about the, um, the idea of, of change in the, for example, in the Presocratics, which, by the way, incidentally, of course, we know about uh, about thanks to Aristotle, many of this vocabulary is probably um, coined or a lean, a lone vocabulary from, from Aristotle. So Aristotle is very influential also for the pre-Aristotelian vocabulary on change. But I was wondering if you have uh, found anything interesting of me on metaboli in, uh, in the Milesian school, for example, uh, where I, I remember some uh, fragments of Thales for, uh, dealing with this word, or in the post-Aristotelian world. Um, the Plotinian reworking of uh, the causes of Aristotle, uh, the Proclean um, metaboli, um, uh, of course they, they owe this vocabulary to Aristotle. I don't know if there's something relevant. That would be, that would be my first question. No? Um, can we speak of a, a non-Aristotelian metabol metabole um, or everything is around him. <laughs> this would be my first point. Uh, and my second uh, idea, I was taking some notes because as a, as a narrator, as a, as a writer, we, we, can, um, we can also uh, learn a lot from the Greek uh, metabole in terms of uh, the design of the structure of a, of a narration. No? Uh, I was, yesterday we were speaking of, of mythology, of the, hero, of, the, of the cycle of the hero, according to Campbell, which was very criticized, etc. And um, I think we, we could um, uh, learn about uh, the metabole in the structure of the, of the narrator. I don't, if, I don't know if you, um, if you know what, uh, what I mean. I, I, I would like to, to ask you about different kinds of metabole, um, how, how we can use them for, for fiction writing uh, from the tragedy. Um, is there, for example, uh, is metabole uh, is mostly for the wars uh, in, in the tragedy, right? Um, can we turn uh, it upside down and look for a, a comic metabol metabole or for a paradoxical metabole uh, in, 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 in antiquity? No? I, I'm thinking of uh, ancient comedy, uh, but also for the use of our screenwriters, which are too depending on very monolithic uh, models of um, Campbellian uh, structure. And uh, I think Greek tragedy in these changes of fortune, Agave, you have been pointing out, uh, uh, all the, 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 the Greek uh, tra uh, tragedy, uh, has a lot to say for modern screenwriters of, uh, of series and st uh, stuff like that. No? Two, two reflections only. I, I don't know if you can develop. Yes, yes. okay, some. shortly. To start with the second question, as you know, uh, the second part of poetics has been eaten by Jorge, uh, yeah, so, so it's lost, and uh, uh, we, 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 we have not it, uh, so, so probably the problem of metabole in the comedy, what you mentioned, should have been included there, and um, the question is of course very important, and I would say that the answer is rather obvious, because um, as I have shown there are these two parts, yes, when we speak about the use of a metabole in uh, 
using ancient word, we would say rhetoric, but we can say literary criticism. Yes? So the first one is the rhetoric figure. Yes, the playing with the repetition, all the words, yes, and the ca cadency when we speak about poetry and the changes in such languages as uh, Polish, for example, where we have very complicated declination, yes, the endings, yes, and the keeping, the, uh, the opening letters. So it's, uh, it, it reminds me, as is, it's been also expressed by ancient writers, um, a metaphor of painting, yes, they're using various colors and shadows. That's just a play, yes, it's a, it's a literary study and everybody writer uh, does it. And that's the first level and the second level, which appears also in the poetics by Aristotle is connected with the plot. That's what you, uh, uh, have said, and of course, in this description which we have in poetics, it's connected with the fate of the tragic hero, which we have known already that the metabole is always at worst. It's a catastrophe. That's the final stage uh, of this. And your question is: Is it always must be this catastrophe? And uh, of course not, because it depends on the plot and on the genre and it can be applicable to any other um, story to even to the i don't know the, the ancient novel i can't remember but i suppose that there must be something in quintilian for example yes about the for yeah of course yes so 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 I would say that, uh, of course, the metabole, the, the essence of the metabole is that it's, that's a permanent, well, that's, it could be one of conclusions I haven't said, yes, that the metabole against this, what uh, Federica said yesterday, I would, uh, I would have disagreed, uh, is that metabole, according to Aristoteles, is something that we can control. I think that metabole is something we cannot control. And Aristotle himself and his fate is the proof. And the fate of the Greek democracy and this fifth, fourth century turn is a proof. Yeah, so I think that the metabole is something which is uh, also in the same time the subject of the change and it's impossible to control. It just happens. Yeah, so, so this is uh, important, and to the, sec and to the first, of course, everybody, everybody knows the ideas of Heraclitus about the permanent movement, about the river we cannot enter twice, and so on. So, so metabole is the very essence of every thing, and not only in Heracl Heraclitian uh, thing. But I don't think the metabole appears there. That's that's a funny thing. Yes, so that we have, let's say, the description, and we have no technical term. The technical term in philosophy appears in Plato. There is about 50 instances, which is not too much when we think how huge work we have in front of us. Yeah? So um, it is not too much, but the, most of them I went through, yes? but the, most of them are quite popular, I would say. They are, not, they are still not very much technically connected was any precise definition of any kind of philosophy. But, but you know, this is the difference between Plato and Aristotle. Yeah? So for me, Plato is much more a poet and a writer than a philosopher. Yeah? So, so I love him as a writer and I hate him as a philosopher. Yeah? So, and it's, uh, in, in Plato, everything is unstable. Yeah? So there's a, a lot of lovely contradictions inside. Yeah? So it's very difficult to trace something stable, like, for example, the stable meaning of metabola in Plato. What later, I don't know, uh, would be very interesting to study the lemma of metabola, not in Little Scott Jones or Montanari, but also in Lampe, in the patristic lexicon. That's, uh, there must be something really to dig in. Yeah? So thanks God I have not taken a look because, you know, it's a, we all could have been lost completely. Uh, but I think it's a good suggestion. Yes? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, Miguel.
doesn't work. Uh, I can see there abajo. But for the for the but for the online people. Um, thanks a lot. This this has been a wonderful, a wonderful uh, uh, survey, both both uh, wide and detailed, and uh, much better than my, my my very quick overview the other day. Which I, and I'm very grateful for for this as a as a wrapping up lecture uh, of of what we have been seeing these these days. So thanks a lot, Christoph. This um, this I, I, I think. Um, these uh, texts that you have commented and also the previous words that you have dwelt on, right? Uh, uh, metallosis, um, uh, metagraphene and so on, it shows this, uh, um, this uh, lack of anxiety, to use the, the word Simon Goldhill was using the other day, um, for Greeks about uh, exchanging words and synonymity and and uh, the fact that, as you were mentioning just now, to refer to change, well, uh, Heraclitus and Plato and Aristotle, they, they use different words and, and they don't seem worried about that. Uh, and in fact, I was thinking, even in, in Spanish, I, I, I suppose in English it's the same. When we say change, we can use it in a very general way or in a, in a technical one, for example, in Spanish, cambio, is the technical word the only possible word for, for the change of rears in, in a car? And it's, it's exactly the same word. Uh, or, or in football, when you change one player for another, they, they speak very technically about you have two um, metabolites, <laughs> right? Uh, or the Real Madrid has only one. So uh, it is uh, an example of how the same word can be in the same time both uh, general, interchangeable, and in some contexts, um, unique. And I think what, the, what is particular about the Aristotelian passages is that Aristotle is fond of the word for some reason um, and tries to define it, to define it and to, to say, okay, let's, let's, in the physics, in the metaphysics, let's see what kinesis is, what we are what we are meaning exactly when we say kinesis. Let's see what we are meaning exactly when we say metabole. Um, because, well, that's his, his interesting. Uh, exactly that passage there, right? Uh, nature has been defined as a principle of motion and change, and it is the subject of our inquiry. We must therefore see what we understand the meaning of motion, in that case is kinesis, right? For if it were unknown, the meaning of nature too would be unknown. So, his insistence of, on, on, on pinpointing precise meanings for, for these words he is using, perhaps just in, in, the, in the context of his room with his pupils, right, with his students, is, okay, what we are talking about exactly when we are using this word. And um, the, 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 the analogy I was trying to, to suggest the other day between his use of metabole in the physics, the politics, and the poetics, it probably comes from the, this reflection on, on the meaning um, uh, of, of that word, right? Mm -hmm. If I can, yeah. and also on the word, you know, that's a famous, exactly. nice passage. To he also that. analyzes the word, and yes. he says that there's something, this, this meta is doing something with the meaning. Yes, so he's also studying just the word, he has to preparing, the technical use and the definition. Exactly, he's reflecting, yes. exactly. He's doing philosophy of language in that, in that passage. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Deloide kai tunama, as the, as the word itself shows. Yes. This meta. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's nice. And, and um, as David was pointing out, uh, the fact that uh, the impact of Aristotelian reflection um, uh, was so so great and so varied in austerity because, for example, politics was practically not received in antiquity and instead from the Renaissance on it, it became very, very important, right? Uh, even earlier from the Middle Ages. Um, but 
precisely that fact uh, means that perhaps we are giving so much weight to, uh, uh, to Metaboli as a concept uh, when it was only in this, in this uh, context in the Lyceum where it was reflected on as a, as a, as a word and, and, and uh, possibly not with the, with the purpose of saying this is the only possible word to name it. It's like for the purpose of our theoretical reflection, let us stick to this word. And um, uh, that's why I, I was wondering in, in the texts that you had at the end of your hand, and, and which uh, you have not uh, arrived to comment them, but I, I, would, I think we would all benefit from a bit of comment on, on the Suda and this lexica of antiquity, because this is again another reflection, conscious reflection on, on that word, not in a general form as, as perhaps in the tragic fragments we might find, right? A metaboli, but perhaps there are other passages with, with uh, metastrophi or and this kind of thing. But in, in the Suda, what, what does it say? Because I, I haven't looked at, at this and, and you, had, you have um, collected them and that's very useful. And thanks again. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you for the comment. And shortly, in, with Suda, it's easy because you know that the project has been finished and the Suda online is available in, entirely. So from that, that I have, the, from the web page, I have the translation. And I said at the beginning, it's quite boring to discuss and was disappointing for me a little bit because it's a passage of Aristotle adapted yes, entirely. All this with these four kinds yes, of, of movement. Um, well, with the understanding of hypocamenon as a substance in this, uh, what, what have you been translating? Lying, underlying, something underlying. Yes, that's a, yes, yeah, substantia. In, in, in Greece, they lie, in Rome, they stand. Yes, but always some, something. <clears throat> yes. But so, so it's, there's nothing to, to, to be commented. But the second part is, is a little bit more interesting, yes, because then we have the double term ecclesis in the same direction, changing what the hoplites are looking at rewards. It's connected to the military language which I was speaking about and uh, continues the same, yes. The first is the turning from the enemy, which they also name to the rear, yes, and it's probably this, this Polybius that why I have been also showing. It is not exact quotation, but this is the idea. So, so, and, there's, and, and there is nothing more. Yeah, so I would say that the, the, for Suda, it's a combination of the Aristotelian definition, focused on the, on the, on the, on the substance, yes, excluding time, excluding unmoving mover, and other things which are important in this system. And then very strange, single, technical meaning connected to the military. It's over. Yes, yes, yes. Aristotle is, and for Suda, and for you is still the high authority. Yes, yes. That's, uh, and and uh, if, if, if you uh, agree, that's uh, this, this poetics with this polas metabolas metabolosa, there is no time, but I just was thinking about Teresa and maybe others of you, about the uh, in, incredible power, rhetoric power of their expression. You know, I, I've, I went through some 15 translations to many languages and none is satisfactory, also in the sense of this rhetoric power, because we, of course, not only this figura etymologica, meta meta, metabalusa, metabal, yes, but we have also this uh, pol, bol, yes, with this labial, yes, which is, uh, uh, so, so it's a pol, bol, Bol with the meta meta with the uh, with this uh, endings of the first two words for las las yes so then we have a strange combination of uh, sound expressions yes used for the rhetoric with a kind even of a melody just try to repeat it yes for las metabolas metabaldusa. Yes, and uh, with the idea which is inside, yes, that's what I'm speaking. Okay, if it is 
figura etymologica, it means nothing. Yeah? It was just to change. But if you take it seriously, there's something more. Yes? To, to, change, to change the change. Yes, and most of the translations in any language, including Spanish and French and Italian, they say that there's a, after many changes, after many changes, yeah, something happened. It's not so easy, and I would even be happy to uh, call for a contest or a concourse for the best translation of the European participants uh, for these three words of Aristotle. Poetics. I don't know what a word could be, but we can negotiate. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> we, stop, right, we, we have time for a short question, uh, if you want. Yes. Yeah, a, a very short question. If if you think about the last quote of uh, Aristotle, that uh, tragedy can find its natural form, that's kind of weird. If he says earlier that. Uh, change is natural to nature. So how how can something find it find it fusin if or its fusis if if fusis is always changing as well? Um. I, I I don't know. That's 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 a paradox. Yeah? So so of course the physics is being changed permanently. Yes, but the result of this permanent change can result also in the change of the physics, which can be understood, as far as I understand well, a kind of development. Yes? So I think that the, the, the physics is not the same was as, uh, as a hippocamenon, what is the essence which cannot be changed. Yes? So, so I think it's, uh, it opens the, the discussion about the idea of progress on the field of the philosophy. Yes? But I don't think it's very deep paradox that the change which is uh, affecting yes, uh, physics uh, is uh, contradictory to the idea that also one of the main features of the physics is the change. Yes? Okay. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you Professor Wielowski for your wonderful lecture now. Um, after this discussion, we should make a, a brief uh, break to rearrange um, our, our table and prepare the next session. So uh, we thank all the, uh, this uh, lecture from, by Chris and um, we see each other in some five minutes approximately. Thank you. Thank you.